This is one of those videos that you're just never going to understand how many hours went into making this video because the reverse engineer of this little module here involved the digital, analog and RF sections. And it's basically speaking a solar powered lighting controller with a Doppler radar detector built into it. And at the moment I've got some LEDs connected uh, and it's working now. It's working now. It wasn't working before and I had to get the oscilloscope and everything on it to actually work out what was wrong. That's why there's also this little green tail and this rogue capacitor that wouldn't normally have been there. You see it's just triggered because it detected movement. Right, tell you what, I shall unplug these. And because this is a module, I have the luxury of actually having taken pictures already and done all the reverse engineering, which saves lots and lots of time. So let's bring in the exhibit. I shall zoom down, I shall focus down onto this and zoom down quite a nice circuit board. Shame it's black because that just makes uh, reverse engineering just that little bit harder. I'll zoom out just a tiny bit. Oh, that wasn't a tiny bit, but it's good enough. Anyway, I'll just go over the basics here because we're better going straight to the schematic. Things to note. Uh, this is the RF section. Note the bag of capacitors in parallel here um, and this huge grounded plane behind it. So it's very directional including this, what I think here, this pad here, could well be a capacitor, forming a high frequency capacitor, because this is a little uh, super high frequency transistor, rated up to about 9 gigahertz, I think. Notice that also all the uh, plated through holes in that ground plane. It's a, a black art. It's very odd. That is effectively decoded by a LM358, which is most certainly not April capable of operating at 9 gigahertz. There's a little infrared um, receiver here, a transistor that switches on a boost circuit that boosts the battery voltage through this AXML chip up to 5 volts. That was an issue. Um, there's some resistors here in a series of LEDs, 3 1 ohm resistors in parallel to give about 3.3 ohms. And there's the option for up to 3 AO90 MOSFETs all in parallel to actually switch the LED. This button here only switches the control circuitry on. It doesn't actually switch any high current. And there's a place for two diodes here, but only one is populated. That is the charge control circuitry. Noting that there's no um, there's no over voltage or under voltage protection as such. That is dealt with entirely by the protection on the lithium cell. Anything else worth talking about here? No, there's not. Let's cut straight to the schematic. It's a triple page schematic. It has to. It's a very complicated circuit. It took a very, very long time to reverse engineer. Quite frustrating, but also very educational and in a way quite fun as well. Uh, make sure I'm focused down onto here. Yes, I am. Here is the solar panel of your choice connected to this. Round about 5 volt output and it goes through a Schottky diode and it charges your lithium cell. That could be a lithium iron phosphate um, or a standard lithium cell. And the main thing is it must have its own protection built in. It's like the standard solar street lights. They have their, and this is where this could probably be used, they have their uh, protection, protected cells and that pretty much determines, well, that is the protection for overcharge and over discharge. There's also on the over across the solar panel, there is a voltage divider with a decoupling capacitor and that provides the dusk sensing, which in this case, a pink dot goes to this pink dot, goes straight into the chip so it can detect when it's dark. Uh, it goes into day mode and starts flashing its LED to show it's charging from 2.6 volts upwards. And as soon as this voltage in the solar panel goes down below 1.6 volts, it turns the light on. So it is using the solar panel as the sensor. The LEDs uh, are switched from the directly from the battery side here. They're not uh, going through that switch just to keep the current loading off that switch. And there's the three 1 ohm resistors giving 0.33 ohms. And there's the one MOSFET, but actually it's A90 times two in this instance, but it has the option of four. And they're all just driven directly with their gate from the chip with a 10k pull down resistor to make sure they behave when the chip is not stable, <clears throat> like when it's booting up or crashed or whatever. Other things, the chip to get a stable supply has a Zener diode so that no matter what uh, voltage comes in here, say for instance, the biggest thing here is a solar panel um, charging during the day and the lithium uh, battery, it uh, turns its protection on and says, I'm full and uh, I'm just disconnecting myself. That means the full 
uh, solar panel voltage will come in and if it is a 5 volt cell it can float higher in intense sunlight and that's the reason there's a 100 ohm resistor also filtering as well and this zener diode cap it probably to a maximum about 5 volts I didn't measure the zener diode uh, and there's a little decoupling capacitor feeding the chip that also powers the infrared receiver directly it's not turned on and off they've used a 8 pin chip here they're relying just on there's going to be a standby current in this thing but the infrared uh, sensor just has like a connection to that supply at the zero volt rail here and it's just going straight to the chip it has a red LED with a very high 5.1k resistor, um, which is flashes to show it's charging, but it flashes very dimly. It's just purely an indicator. I was hoping it might respond to the remote control. Uh, it doesn't. It just basically, I thought that might flash for that, but the lights themselves do indicate, they indicate that you've uh, pressed a button and it's received it. This orange dot here, that's the sense in from the Doppler detection circuitry. This is where people are going to say it's not actually Doppler. I would say it is Doppler, given what I saw in the oscilloscope, but it's open to debate. Oh, so there is a 5-volt supply for the Doppler circuitry. That's a slight skid mark there, because I made a mistake. Uh, th that uh, is a 1.2K. I read the uh, resistor back to front, and it looked like 220 ohm, but it was actually 1.2K. But there is a PNP transistor, that turns the 5 volt supply on and uh, it's controlled from the processor pulls this pin down turns this transistor on and that switches on the axml which generates the 5 volts and this thing runs at 300 kilohertz <clears throat> and has a 10 micro henry inductor it's also got this 300k resistor not sure why across here maybe just to give a nice decisive stop and start when the transistor turns on and off and avoid problems of slight leakage not sure but there's a 5 volt out with its little capacitor the very little capacitor, the inadequate capacitor, as it happens. Okay, next page. <clears throat> the RF circuitry, the wizardly black art RF circuitry. Here's a 5 volt supply. It goes via a 10 ohm resistor and the four capacitors in parallel. And then there's a bias network. And there's that little capacitor, the question mark, that is actually etched onto the circuit board itself. And that goes to this FCB Super high frequency transistor with a wiggly, wiggly track there. <laughs> That's just, uh, the RF guys will know what this is. I don't. And then it gets, uh, the current uh, flows through that, uh, then through this 150 ohm resistor. So you're going to get a slight voltage here. Mega filtering, more filtering, more filtering, more filtering, loads of filtering. They're trying to get rid of that RF uh, frequency and they're just looking for the voltage undulation caused by the Doppler causing this to actually undulate in current is from what I can see here. And that then goes out to the amp and the filter. Anything else worth looking at on this page? No, it's black magic. Now we're on to the analog posse, who will appreciate that there's a dual op amp, an LM358. And uh, there's the RF section output. It comes in via this decoupling capacitor from that. There's two high value resistors, roughly hold that in the sort of midpoint of the... Uh, supply and that I did detect that. Where did I tap in? I tapped in here, big X here. I tapped in with the oscilloscope there because it wasn't working and I can show you what was going on. But there's mega filtering. This little capacitor here has a star next to it, a little asterisk because they have splooged. They've splooged a little capacitor here. I don't think that's an official position for it, but they've just added it in and splooged bludged it between two sort of bus rails coming off here just for extra filtering. I think they've had problems with stability. It's a, a black art, that's why. So there, that's a filtering capacitor. There's a, a bit of feedback filtering here. And there's also, this is a high gain amplifier with two one mega ohm resistors going from the output to the inverting input, which means it's going to amplify the signal. But um, there's filtering again. The, this is a low pass filter, I think. The analog guys will be able to tell what that is. But anyway, the output signal, once it's out, uh, has a Doppler waveform on it and causes fluctuations in the voltage level in the output of that. And the net result of that is that this op amp here, the second one in the same package, has a 
potential divider on its positive pin, so when the voltage exceeds a specific threshold, it triggers the output and there's that orange dot, it's going back to the microcontroller. But it didn't work. Let me show you what happened. It was just not detecting anything at all. And I tapped in here and found this very, very annoying waveform. It was a very, it's almost like a, a it's two kilohertz for a start. I'm not sure where that's coming from. I wonder if it was a harmonic I was looking at. But uh, also it's a fairly low speed oscilloscope, the one I use, because it's the simplest to use. It's the fastest to set up. It's just, it's a dumb oscilloscope. It's only got a single channel and it's just easy to do. And also it fits in the bench easier. But there's this almost like a half wave rectified sine wave here. And um, it's about four volts. And uh, the frequency, it's 0.2 nanoseconds of division. Did I say 0.2 milliseconds? Have I screwed up here? All right, it's point, no, it's 0.2. I can't remember if that was nano or milli. But anyway, I think it's 0.2 nanoseconds, which means the total distance between these pulses would be about roughly 0.5 nanoseconds, which equates to about 2 kilohertz. Um, and I was looking at the circuit board and thinking, where's that going to be? And I, I thought, is it, an inter is it an interaction with the frequency of this power supply that's driving the RF oscillator? So I noticed there were a couple of uh, holes here, these two holes. So I thought, what if I stuck another decoupling capacitor in here? Because they have a capacitor position here, a capacitor position here, and then that through-hole capacitor position. So I got a low ESR capacitor and just poked it through the plated holes, and it improved it greatly. Uh, I put a 22 megafarad one. So I got a 100 megafarad one in, and I stuck it in, and it went from this to this. The ripple's still there, but much lower. And uh, now I noticed it was disturbing that waveform when... I, it was actually below the trigger threshold when I moved about in the vicinity. So I turned the uh, time scale so it was a much slower sweep and I was getting little sign, little bursts of sine waves. When I put my hand backwards and forwards in front of it, I was getting those little bursts of sine waves and if you moved your hand really fast, they were closer together. And if you moved it slowly, they were further apart. That, to me is an indication of Doppler. And when my whole body moved backwards and forwards, you could see bursts. As I went forward and back, you could see low frequency waveforms, a uh, little burst as I moved. And it is working now. So that's the main thing, I guess. Interesting little module. But if you have one, you may wish to uh, note that there are maybe fixes that have to be done to make it work. Now, how to use it? You basically connect your solar panel, you connect your LED panel, and you have this, the advantage versus the pass infrared is the Doppler. Where have, where have I put that circuit board? I've just lost it, haven't I? Yeah, it's in the vicinity somewhere. Can't see it. Um, where have I put it? No, I really have. I've put it down somewhere. This happens a lot when I'm filming. There's so many... Uh, Things with wires that, you know, it's very hard seeing the one that I'm looking for. But um, the advantage of the Doppler over the passive infrared is that the Doppler can see through a plastic case, which is quite advantageous. It means that you don't have any problems with the ceiling of the case. This whole thing, apart from this on-off button, can be uh, sealed behind the case in, inside the enclosure. The passive infrared... I kind of think I prefer a pass infrared, but maybe there are advantages to Doppler, particularly when it's working. Um, what else is there to say? Right, uh, the modes. It has the modes, the remote control, in Chinese. You can turn it on, you can turn it off. You've got the uh, long on automatic power reduction mode. I'm not really sure what that is. It came quite bright, but I think maybe the intensity just dims down as the night goes on. I'm not sure. You've got the, this button does inductive highlight and low light, which basically means that it dims up and down. It, so it starts off, it dims up to quite a high brightness. And then it, after about 20 seconds, it dims to a low level. But when it detects you with the Doppler detection, it then ramps it up for another 20 seconds. The inductive highlight and 
uh, light off is simply just turn the light on and off when it detects your movement. Uh, timing two hours and radar sensing three hours and four hours. That I'm guessing from dusk it'll stay. It'll be using the radar sensing, but it'll actually just uh, time off completely. It'll go out after that number of hours. That's a guess. I'm not going to wait for two or three hours or four hours indeed to actually test that. But that's it. Uh, interesting little circuit board. Um, a whole medley of science going on here. The the microcontroller, the analog section, and the RF section. It was very. It took a long time to reverse engineer that and indeed fix it. But there we have it. Uh, if you come across one of these modules or you have one and it's not working, then the bit you want to do these two holes here. The negative is to the outside, the positive point in the way. You want to get a low ESR capacitor, I put 100 megafarad in, and that solved the problem and made it work again.